It is America's worst nightmare. A nuclear attack on U.S. soil by a rogue nation or by terrorists. The threat is real. Our government now admits that. But the CIA and FBI continue to insist that no nuclear weapons or large quantities of bomb-making materials have left the former Soviet Union and fallen into enemy hands. But one brave American, a U.S. Special Forces Green Beret, says the government is not telling the truth. His name? Jonathan Keith Idema. We want to perform two actions as fast as possible. This is the true story of how Adema, working for the Pentagon, uncovered information about nuclear material smuggling, terrorist activities in Eastern Europe, and KGB spies deep within the U.S. intelligence network. It was information our government wanted badly, but only on its own terms. To reveal the details would have put lives at risk. Adema knew he could only rely on his own people at the Pentagon. But in the post-Soviet climate, the CIA and FBI had more clout. An intelligence turf war developed, and Keith Idema was at ground zero. Trained to serve his country, but true to his friends and sources, Adema would not cooperate with the FBI. The result? He and his wife were set up on phony wire fraud charges. Adema spent four years in federal prison. The story begins in 1991. The world was changing. The tiny Baltic country of Lithuania was breaking away from the Soviet grip. But it quickly became a transit point for nuclear terrorists moving weapons and nuclear materials out of Russia. One man, Joseph Rimkevichis, a hero in Lithuania's bloody uprising, fought to make his country strong and independent. At his side, U.S. Green Beret, Keith Idema. There were other genuine friendships both here and abroad. Adema developed his information in the behind-the-lines tradition of the U.S. Special Forces, a tradition that says, protect your assets, leave no one behind, and never give up. This is a story of perseverance and patriotism, friendships and devotion to duty, and treachery at the highest levels of the United States government. Robbed of his freedom, they thought he would break. They were wrong. Now, Keith Idema is out and ready to tell the world his remarkable story. They saw an opportunity to take him, and they tried to do it. It's on, because I'm not stopping. John Wayne movie, The Green Berets, saw when I was 12 years old. Never changed my mind from then to the day I enlisted. Saw the movie and decided that's what I wanted to do. You better get a square away, and if the gun doesn't work, you better get rid of it and get another one. You have to be a little bit different to be a special forces person. And some people have said that you are a little bit different, that you have a very strong personality. Even your friends and people who like you very much say you have a strong personality. Do you think that this has gotten you in trouble from time to time? Absolutely. All the time. I think, you know, I mean, there's people that he can interface with, and uh, there are people he can't. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to give him any crap. Everybody thinks that Special Forces is all about being Rambo. I said, but that's not what it's all about. It's all about never giving up, even if you're losing. You just don't give up, and you don't stop fighting. This was a present from the commander of the Thai Special Warfare Command. They wanted to know, well, how do you shoot? And I said, I shoot okay. And they said, well, how'd you like to have a shooting competition? So let's make a competition with your conditions and with our conditions. And who will win? So we started. So where are we going to shoot? I said, we have a range. 
underneath the ministry, underground. I went, oh, I'd love to shoot there. So they said, I said, what are we going to shoot? Everything. We have every weapon made. So I was like, whoa, this is like a special force weapons guy. This is like, you know, Disneyland. Great, let's go. Prize was a bottle of vodka. And what time was it? Local. Local stuff? Yeah, he said that it's tasty because he won. We finished the bottle of vodka and have been friends ever since. When he left, and they left by train, and I was at the station waving him when the train started to move, uh, he jumped out of the train, which was already moving, and because the distance was so long, he threw me this, saying, catch! I caught it. And I built this uh, special forces knife. Nice job. For the special forces mark symbol. Okay. The best present I had in my life. start a, um, a, a, an exposition where people could go and find special operations equipment. Well, to never give up. I mean, one thing you learn is just never give up. because the 12th director controlled, the KGB actually controlled the nuclear stockpiles. So they had control of it. And their accounting procedures are not nearly, they're not as advanced as they would like us to believe. If you are in possessed of the money, you can buy, can buy anything you want. And for them, uranium or what weapons, whatever, are simply goods to sell. And that's it. If you're the KGB and you and the directorate that takes care of stock, safeguarding nuclear stockpiles comes under your control and you tell them to transfer them to some ministry or some department of science, whatever it is, and you transfer it there and that's also under your control, it's very easy to make it disappear at that point. Is that how they did it? It's exactly how they did it. How many miles did it get? About 520, 25. How long have you been here now? Almost two years. Two years. And before that, you were? Let's see. Oklahoma, no, Federal but... Transfer Center, yeah. Oklahoma. So. USP, Atlanta. Hey, Tom, come. US, uh, Lewisburg, no. Petersburg. No. I did a tour of all the prisons. Mr. Foster, how are you? Okay, so. I'm not too good, considering what you bastards put me through for the last couple of months. 